I'm super excited to work this question of the day because we had a ton of discussion on the Facebook page about it. Nobody seemed to agree on the answer and people were confused about how to work it. Plus, it's very, very typical of the GED test. Um, uh, and so uh, let's take a look here. So we have a word problem. Mark owns a photography stand at the zoo. He is analyzing expenses and income to increase profit. Now, the expenses include renting the... Oh, I need my pen. Sorry, guys. Okay, here we go. The expenses include renting the 12-foot by 15-foot space at the zoo. So there's some information we've been given, the size of the space. And I can also see the rental cost. I rent it for $1,500 um, each month. Now, it says, what is the rental cost in dollars per square foot? Now, I cheer every time somebody tells me to find the something per something. They say, find the blank per blank. Or, what is the rental cost in dollars per square foot? Or, what is the speed in miles per hour? Anytime I'm given that phrase here, it tells me exactly what to do if I just know how to interpret it. This phrase right here is the directions to solve this problem. It says, take the dollars. We're going to start with the dollars. So I'm going to just write this down, what I'm learning up here. I'm going to start with the dollars. And then I'm going to purr it. And this is what you need to understand. To purr something literally means to divide it. In fact, some of us learned, if you were in my math class anyway, you learned that per cent literally means to divide by 100. Um, you also learned that we often abbreviate. In fact, I should do that here now. Instead of using a divide by sign that we're used to, I'm going to use the slash dollars per square foot because a lot of you recognize that we use a slash to abbreviate the word per all the time. Why? We also use a slash to mean divide in math class. And that's why, because per literally means divide. And what do I need to divide by? Really, Be really careful here. What I need to divide by is the square feet. The square feet. Now, mathematicians will abbreviate square feet oftentimes like this. You guys will go, oh, feet squared. No, that's how we write square feet. So this says take the dollars and divide by the square feet. Really simple directions. Let's go looking for what we need in order to now do this problem. Well, one thing you're going to notice is that I already know the dollars. The dollars the, that I'm paying for this uh, piece of property is $1,500. So that part I know. But there's a problem with this. I know I need to divide $1,500 by the square feet. But nowhere in the problem does it tell me the number of square feet. Look, I see the size of my property. It's 12 feet by 15 feet. But be really careful, a regular foot is not the same as a square foot. This square foot, anytime somebody asks you square foot, that implies area. The only thing measured in square feet, the only thing is area. That's the definition of area. It's the number of squares to cover a shape, okay? The number of squares to cover a shape. So you think square foot, you need area. So in order to finish this problem up here, I'm going to have to go in the side work and figure out the area of my, of my photography stand. So go ahead and just assume, if nobody's told you, that the photography stand is a rectangle. The likelihood is it, we don't have a round photography stand or a triangular one. They would tell you if it was any shape other than a rectangle. Okay. Now, I know that this photography stand is 12 feet by 15 feet, how am I supposed to figure out its area? Well, I don't care if you look at the formula sheet or if you just remember it. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. To find the area of a rectangle, you just multiply the two dimensions, 12 by 15. And the formula sheet will tell you that. It tells you A equals LW, or area equals length times width. So I'm going to multiply those together in my calculator. I would have a calculator if I was doing this problem, and I find out that this is 180 square feet. Feet times feet gives me square feet. And now I have the other number to fill into my problem. I'm going to take that $1,500 and I'm going to divide by the square feet that I found, 180 square feet. Notice how I use my units. By using your units, you'll make less mistakes, guys, when you do word problems. So I'm going to take that $1,500 and I'm going to divide by 180, those 180 square feet, and I get this number in my calculator. Whoa, what just happened? 
Okay, I get this number in my calculator. 8.33333, and students panic. They don't know what to do. Well, in order to decide about rounding, if I need to round, when I need to round, especially when people didn't give me any rounding directions, this problem has no rounding directions, um, what I need to think about is what unit am I am in. So uh, what unit am I in? Well, I am currently in dollars per square foot. My numbers, I did the math there, but this is still dollars per square foot. Okay, so think about money. Where does money end? Well, we only take money out to two decimal places, so my number's going to get chopped right here. Now, don't just chop off a number without considering the number that you're about to lose. I'm about to lose this three, this very next number. You have to ask yourself, is it big enough to matter? Is it five or higher? Well, it's not, and so I am going to do what we call rounding down. Now, careful, rounding down doesn't mean my number goes down. Um, here, this number is not going to go down. It just means I throw away the remaining digits without them affecting my number. And so I have $8.33 per square foot. Wonderful. Hope this video made sense. Uh, I know a lot of people were really confused on this problem, so make sure you ask me in the comments if you have a question.